Former New York Giants defensive lineman and 2022 Ring of Honor inductee Leonard Marshall joins me on today's Locked on Giants podcast as we take a walk down memory lane ahead of his big night next Monday. That's coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to a special edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Train. I'm your host, and today's episode of the Locked On Giants podcast is brought to you in part by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash LockedOnNFL. And ladies and gentlemen, I am absolutely honored today to bring you a special interview with a special gentleman. He is going to be inducted into the New York Giants Ring of Honor Monday night, a long overdue honor, I might add. He'll be inducted with several other guys Monday night, halftime of of the uh, Giants-Dallas Cowboys game. He is a two-time Super Bowl champion, two-time second-team All-Pro, two-time Pro Bowler, 83 and a half sacks, 714 career tackles, a 1983 second round pick out of LSU, the 37th pick overall, Mr. Leonard Marshall, a good friend, a good man. Leonard, thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking time this morning with me. Oh, you're quite welcome, Pat. I'm so, so honored. Not as honored as I am. I mean, like like I said, I grew up, you know, I'm not afraid to date myself here. I grew up watching you and that great Giants defense of the 1980s and what a treat that was to watch you and Harry and Lawrence and and all those guys George um you guys just had that chemistry and and you were something to be feared well I could tell you this it was like watching poetry in motion most of the times because Mm -hmm. you know we were so in sync with one another in terms of you know the things that we did and the responsibilities we held to play the positions we played in the grand scheme of things with the New York Giants. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, I got a chance to play alongside some of the greatest players I've ever had a chance to be around um, in football when I uh, when I worked with the New York Giants. And uh, those guys today are some of my best friends. And that's wonderful. It's a brotherhood. It truly is a brotherhood. Now, Leonard, when you first came into the league, and let's go back to when you were a young man just coming out of LSU. Sure. Obviously, obviously, you know, you, you have confidence in yourself, but it's got to be kind of like scary almost. You know, you're coming to the big city. I don't know if you had ever been to, to New York before. What Do you remember what was going through your mind when you found out you were going to the Giants and as such a high draft pick? Well, I could tell you the pressure really uh, uh, began to amount. Uh, when I first got here, I walked in that locker room and I said, you know, wow, here's reality. You know, and and like I talked about this past summer, you know, I was the big bad wolf at LSU. I mean, my nickname on campus was the Big Cheese. You know, my teammates all, you know, they knew that, you know, day in, day out, I brought it in practice. I brought it on game day. I brought passion in our locker room every time, every every ounce of what I had. And I wanted to bring that same attitude to the New York Giants. Those guys made me earn it. Those guys made me be responsible and be accountable. And I can't thank them enough for doing it because they kind of paved the way for me to become who I became. I mean, the guys I remember when I first walked in that locker room, the JT Turners, the Beasley Reese's, the George Martins, the senior Harry Carson, um, uh, a, wrong, a, a young, spirited linebacker, and Lawrence Taylor, um, uh, guys on the other side of the ball, Gordon King, Brad Benson, Billy Ard, Jim Burt. I mean, all these got Billy Neal, all these guys made me earn it. And, and I guess when we reached the pinnacle of winning the championship in 86, that became the culmination of all that work all that hard, hard work that I had put into trying to become one of them. 
and and the understanding what it what it what it meant to become one of them. Uh, I often reflect upon that, and I look at the journey with the biggest smile, man, because I didn't think that we could achieve what we achieved. We were a pretty damn good football team, and we were a good football team because we really worked hard at it, and we were we were not selfish. We were we were more um, united. Um, um, it was very military, like the attitude we had with each other. And that's why today I'm, I'm as close with those guys as ever. And of course, let's not forget the coaching staff, big well, tuna, you know, Bill Parcells oh, no, and, and your precision coaches. I mean, they, they obviously had a role in shaping your fine career. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, as, as Nick Saban refers to him as little Bill and big Bill, <laughs> uh huh. little Bill has, uh, had his hands in it, you know, and, and was a guy who demanded toughness and, 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 and big bill, you know, he was a guy who was, uh, toughness, attention to detail, uh, do everything you can, to sew everything up that you got going around so that you're not, you're not getting distracted while you're trying to accomplish this and then focus while you, when you get here, focus, this should be the most important thing in the world. This is what, you, you, you signed up for, this should be the most important thing in the world. Not what's going on at your house, but what's going on inside this house. And that's the way we approach it. Very, uh, very laborly, as some would say. Absolutely. Now, in 1985, you know, I, I remember talking to you about this for, for the Big 50, the book that I wrote. The Giants kind of got the, their bubble bursts by the uh, the Bears in the playoffs. And I remember you saying this and Harry Carson said this, that that left such a bitter taste in your mouth that come the following year, you were just not going to be stopped. You were determined to make up for that and, and then some. Can you, do, do you remember that, that summer leading up to that 1986 season, the first Super Bowl season of the Giants franchise and just kind of what the move was like and your role in that? Because at that point, you were, you were a veteran. So you had young guys coming in looking up to you. Yeah, I tell you, that game against the Bears in 85 left such a bad taste in my mouth. Because at that season, I was, I was, it was the first time I was defensive lineman of the year in the NFC and, uh, and the NFL. And, um, you know, I worked my tail off to try to be that guy and, and, and to be a guy that, that, you know, our defense can hang their hat on. Uh, to make plays and help us be the best we could possibly be and, and, and to be accountable. Uh, and I felt like that was the first time I got into a game where no matter what we did right, everything went wrong. And I'm walking off the field with Harry, and I said, Harry, I never felt as horrible as I feel today. I said, I'm going to start to work out and start training early uh, to get ready for next season. Because I know now that we're a better football team than we really uh, showed the world today. And um, if I can do it, some of these other guys can do it and, uh, and channel their energy to, uh, to work as hard as we possibly can to taste what that feels like to become a champion. And that's what we did. We, we, we went back to the drawing board. We uh, rolled up our sleeves and we, we got deeply involved and, you know, we made the commitment to Johnny Parker and the coaching staff to be the best we could possibly be in 86. And as a result of it, we ended up becoming champions. And Johnny Parker, of course, was the famous uh, strength and conditioning coach under Bill Parcells for a number of years. Very instrumental, very underrated in his role, but very key in helping, uh, you know, you guys become champions. <laughs> Hey, business owners, as you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find those people that you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job posting in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. 
Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so that your network can help you find the right people. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize who you like to hire and interview. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So go ahead, post your job for free today at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So let's go to that 86 season. You know, you come in, you've got a renewed oh. attitude, one that, you know, probably we're not going to be stopped. We're not going to be denied. Defensively speaking, what do you remember about, you know, like the, the meetings you guys had, you know, did you talk about we're going to become the top defense? Did you, did you set goals for yourself? You know, what, what were some of those conversations like and how did they unfold during the course of the season? I recall the first, the first real meeting we had as a spring in the spring with Bill Belichick. And we, we did a recap of the season before and, and all the accomplishments we had. We had eight guys go to the Pro Bowl that year. We were, the first, I think, one of the first teams to do that and not win the championship. Uh, we have, you know, what, I think it was four guys on the defensive side and four guys on the offensive side go to the Pro Bowl, which was crazy. So then we, we, we looked at ourselves and, you know, I remember Bill Belichick saying, well, we hit in the top five in every category in the league, uh, you know, fumbles, interceptions, you know, sacks, defensive plays, impact plays, tackles for losses. We were in the top five league-wise. He said, but we can be better. And, and, I, and here's how I think we can get better. And, you know, we, we want to scheme this better. We want to get more productivity at this position. We want to sew up things we do defensively in the, defensive, in the secondary. We want to play better pass coverage. We want to challenge three teams in our division, the Cowboys, the Eagles, and the Redskins. And we want to give that team on the West Coast a ton of hell in terms of trying to beat us. Even if we got to go to their place, I'll come here. And uh, the fact that we challenged that energy and we didn't have that many guys falling asleep in meetings. <laughs> because <laughs> Bill Belichick's nickname was Captain Sominex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know so, that. Yeah, so... You know, trying to get Captain Salmonex to uh, to really uh, uh, stay alert for him and, and, and take the teachings and then apply them to the game. And when we go on the field, you know, produce and be productive uh, in the grand scheme of things uh, was tough. But yet the guys got through it. And uh, and we knew we were we knew we could be pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. We knew we had the skill set, Pat, but, you know, it had to be applied, you know. There's textbook champions, and then there's guys that are real champions. And I think that we showed the world we were real champions. Yes. I mean, there hasn't been any team to play a 3-4 defense the way we hit, we did, other than maybe a Pittsburgh Steelers team or two um, that could say they honestly had 11 guys firing all on the same cylinder for mm -hmm. the same thing at the same time repeatedly for a complete season. Mm, very good point. You know, and the thing that I think was most impressive about that defense that you played on is that not only were you all friendly off the field, but you all just had that chemistry on the field. You know, you complimented LT and Harry complimented, you know, Jim Bird and, you know, just it just seemed like a puzzle that was just perfectly pieced together. And it, it you know, on any other team, you know, if you don't have a Lawrence Taylor, you'd say, my goodness, who do you pick for your MVP? You know, but, and, and you just had so many guys, yourself, you know, Harry, like I said, George Martin, you know, LT obviously changed the game. I mean, can you just talk about that synergy you guys had on, on the field? Well, the, the synergy on the field came from the fact that, you know, we all checked our egos at the door. And, um, you know, I knew what I meant to Lawrence. Um, I knew what Harry meant to me, you know, and, and, and vice versa, you know. and um, I think the beauty of it is we really respected each other's talents. And, and, and we knew come game time, man on man, we could look a man in the eye and say, I gave you everything I had today. And I'm quite certain 
you gave me yours. Uh, game in, game out. You know, and, and that was the beauty of that, I, I think. I think that the trust, the accountability, the integrity, football integrity, um, um, uh, knowing that, you know, if, if, if we're playing a run, a run scheme and I'm going to join Jim Burt hip to hip, that Lawrence is going to join me hip to hip, and Harry's going to join us all. We're going to create a brick wall on the right side of our defense that either the ball's going to either bounce outside or the ball's going to go completely away from us. And those guys could chase. I mean, Lawrence was the best chase defender I've ever seen. He could run a play down backside better than any linebacker I've ever seen. You know, and Carl was the same. So it was very, very uh, uh, orchestrated the way we played together. Mm -hmm. And that's when I look back and I watch some of the film, it's just amazing some of the things that we did together while not even knowing that we did it. Yeah, it is amazing. Now, in 1990, you guys did it again. You, you made it to the Super Bowl. This time you went up against the Buffalo Bills and that K-Gun offense that they ran. And uh, Belichick came up with a brilliant, an absolutely brilliant plan, I thought, for the defensive side of the ball. As I recall... Let Thurman Thomas run crazy, but shut down that passing game. And you guys were hitting, well, I mean, the, def the defensive secondary, they were hitting guys. Um, they weren't able to get, get open. You guys were applying the pressure. Do you remember that? I mean, would, did that just like stun you when Belichick said, we're going to let Thurman Thomas run, but we're going to hit the heck out of these other guys? I looked at him like he was crazy. <laughs> I, said, I said, Bill, you, you, we're going to do what? He said, we're going to play you. At left defensive end, we're going to play Lawrence at right defensive end. I'm going to play Eric Howard in the middle. And we're going to play this scheme the whole, the entire game. I said, Bill, you realize I'm going to be, I'm going to play 75 plus snaps of football against a 360 pound lineman, a guy I'm giving away 70 pounds to and 80 pounds to, and you want me to rush the passer every snap? I said, man, I'm going to be so tired. I better get my butt in gear. Uh, for this one. So I can honestly tell you, I've never been so tired in my life as I was in the game of Super Bowl 25. Uh, to play that offense and, and and to play that scheme, I'm actually glad we didn't play more than 23 minutes in the game because <laughs> I've never been so tired in my life. And you could thank Otis Anderson in part for that, who was also That's going into the to the Ring of Honor with you, along with Rodney Hampton, Ronnie Barnes. Um, I think there's about seven guys going in. Uh, Joe Morris is going in as well. Um, all running backs, except for for yourself and and Ronnie and, and a couple of you know the the legacy guys. But um, yeah. you know, Leonard, when you look back at your career, how did you grow? as a football player and as a man from the time you walked in the door to the time you left the Giants, you left the Giants, I believe, after the 90, 1992 season. How did you grow? I think that the, the, the thing that I take, my takeaway from the Giants is I had very strong leadership in Big Bill and Little Bill. We had a, 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 a just unbelievable coaching staff, you know, from Lamar Leachman to Romeo Cornell to Lenny Fontes to the guys on the offensive side of the ball, Fred Oakland, um, um, uh, Tommy Coughlin, um, you know, uh, just a whole, a whole bunch of guys uh, contributed to that. I think the growth was to check my ego at the door. Uh, Johnny Parker was very instrumental in everything I did. Uh, Johnny Parker was my strength coach in college at LSU. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget the day he walked in the locker room. He said to me, Leonard, now you know if I take this job, I need you to be my guy. I need, I need you to be accountable to me. And, and I will too be accountable to you. He said, everything you give me, I'm going to give it back to you 10 times over. I said, but I, he said, but I got to be a guy. I said, Johnny, you take this job. I'll be the first guy in this weight room every day and the last guy to leave. And I, and I did that for the most part for my 10 years as a giant or as long as he was with the football team. Um, when I had to leave the team over a contract dispute in 1992, um, it, it broke my heart because I wanted my legacy to all be with the New York Giants. Um, you know, the team that drafted me, 
Well, and Tamara was so good to me early on in my career. Uh, the staff, the people there, you know, I go back to Ed Croak and, 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 and several others in the organization that really meant something to me, man. Tony Seglio, John Mancuso, uh, the guys that would cut film for me and, and, and give me things to, to go home and study the game and, and to watch what I do in, in the grand scheme of things and then learn what I do with others in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, a lot of that comes to mind, you know, all that, all the wind sprints, all the weight lifting, all the conditioning, all the people and the bodies I touched, all that comes to mind as the culmination of how I became Leonard Marshall of the New York Giants. So at the end of the day, you know, my greatest regret is leaving the team in 92, but my, my, my greatest inspiration is, you know, the leadership that I got from the Giants organization. That is what carries me in, in life today, you know, as a, a man, a husband, a father, um, uh, a brother, um, uh, a guy who's built his life on achievement. Um, that's my greatest takeaway. Yeah. And, and also, you know, after you left the Giants, you went to the Jets for a year. And then I think you finished up with Washington. But you know what? Wellington Mara always said, once a Giant, always a Giant. And uh, your legacy is as a Giant, even though you had those two years away. Um, that's like saying, you know, Carl Banks, who, who played, I think, for Cleveland for a little bit after his Giant career was over. People don't think of that. They, they, they think Carl Banks, Giants linebacker, you know, so. Correct. It, it just happens towards the end of, a, of one's career. Hey, Giant fans, Bet Online is the only place that offers the best information on the latest odds, contests, and player props for all your sports betting needs. No matter what sport you're into, Bet Online has you covered. Plus, they offer everything you need to know for live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. So head on over to Bet Online today to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online where the games start. Leonard, let's talk now a little bit about your post career because you went on to become a very successful businessman. You have a lot of things going on, and I want to get some of those things out to to the listeners here. Um, what you have your foundation? Let, let's talk about your foundation. What passions you have, and what you're trying to to do? You know, now that you're in your your post, well into your post career, and and just you know continuing to grow as a person. So one of the things that 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 uh, has been like a uh, uh, a big peeve of mine is the image of players and the perception of players. You know, most people have the perception that. We're a bunch of greedy guys who uh, were just blessed with a talent. And and because we were so blessed with a talent, we take that talent, we use that talent to exploit situations and opportunities that the common person can't achieve, doesn't achieve, or or gets a second chance. That is the biggest and the, probably the greatest misnomer of being a professional athlete. Most professional athletes give of themselves more than anyone will ever know. And the fact that most of the time you don't see it uh, because it's not publicized, it's the negativity that's publicized, just as I talk about. It takes, it takes a lifetime to become who you become, but it takes a minute to destroy it all. And people tend to want to drag successful people down because they can't, either they can't be them, they're jealous of them, and they wish they could do what they do. I got involved with civil and sexual assault of both women and men and college campuses because I had a friend of mine who, who came to me um, from Long Island and said to me, Leonard, um, one of my children goes to the University of Michigan and one of my children while in college was sexually assaulted and civilly assaulted. What do you think of this and how can it affect the role of collegiate athletes in terms of teaching them discipline and teaching them, truly teaching them that when someone says no, it means no. I said, this is great that you want to do this. Um, let me take a look at it. I turned around, I went back to Ira 
um, after reviewing it for about 30, 40 days, and said to him, I think this makes sense, Ira. I think that we can make a change. It just so happened that back to back, two incidents happened to two professional people whom I admire, one of them being Ray Rice and the other one being Jay-Z. And I said, wow, if there was someone else, would this really have been talked about the way it's talked about? If they weren't celebrated people, how would have this been dealt with? What if it's reverse? It's in reversal. What if it's someone assaulted them? Because in, in most cases, you don't hear about someone assaulting a celebrated person, a professional athlete, or or a collegiate athlete. You, you never hear about that part. But you do hear about it if it's a celebrated individual. So I said, you know what, regardless of the person, I think it's important to get out a positive message about sexual or civil assault and then to have people come forward and talk about it. And then go on college campuses and high school campuses when you can and discuss it and talk about treating each other with dignity and respect, both male and female. And so that's what my nonprofit does. It educates, it eradicates, and it informs people of the differences associated with civil and sexual assault. That's key because, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of cases don't get reported and then right. you have victim shaming, you know, some victims feel like they deserved it or brought it on. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a subject that I think makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Yes, very much so, Pat. And, you know, people don't realize that, you know, some people become so depressed over this mm. that they, they tend to commit suicide. They tend to become suicidal. Um, extremely depressed. Um, it's a mess. It's a mess. And and your nonprofit is is the Leonard Marshall Foundation. The Leonard A. Marshall Foundation. Leonard A. Marshall Foundation, so which which you have a website. We'll put that information in the show notes. Now, um, ahead of your induction into the Ring of Honor, you you have teamed up. Um, with, uh, I, and I apologize, I forget the name of the organization, but you're selling some shirts. Um, yes. ahead of, so you, you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. So I have a buddy of mine, a fan. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, his name is Craig Santucci. Mm -hmm. uh, he's known as the giant guy on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, he has his own podcast and he loves the players. He's been following the team for years. He's, you know, he's, he, I, I won't say he's a frustrated jock. I'll say he's a guy who played the game at a high level in college, didn't didn't feel comp, didn't have the skill set to play professionally, but loves the game, loves the players, follows them all, has a lot of knowledge, and uh, and took a liking to just who Leonard Marshall really is. And he said to you know uh, you know Leonard you know because we live so close to each other. Uh, I'd like to work with you and your nonprofit. So I said, why not, Craig? He says, I'm in the car business. I said, okay, what do you do in the car business? He goes, I have a software that identifies cars and does something else and something else. And, you know, I'm able to help, you know, car dealerships move more cars with this information. So I said, I have a chance to hook you up with a couple of guys I know in the car business. And if it makes sense, uh, we could do a project or two with them. Well, he proposed this idea of these Ring of Honor t-shirts mm -hmm. to commemorate the celebration at the Giants Stadium on September 26th. So I said, well, you know what? This could be something good. We'll donate the money to my nonprofit and your nonprofit, and we'll make a bunch of people happy. And in the meantime, we'll fill the stadium with blue shirts with number 70 on them. He said, Leonard, why not? And I agreed to do it. So so far, he's been selling shirts. I think he sold over a thousand t-shirts. Wow! Five weeks, and um, he's just an awesome guy who who has just been a hundred hundred percent transparent with me, and I too with him. And uh, his heart and mind is in the right place. I mean, we want to be able to do something good to help people. 
Right. And I'm just looking up real quick. He said, sizes are limited. I heard from Craig. So he said, you can get your shirts at uh, nygiantsrush.com. Sizes are limited. Um, so yeah, I, I, I happen to see the shirts. Now, did you sign some of them or all of them? I, I, I signed about 200 of them. Okay. I sure did. I signed okay. 200 of them. And uh, I told them, you know, uh, the money's for charity. Right. And, uh, and let's do this the right way. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, so Leonard, you know, I, I, as we record this, the induction's still a few days away, but what do you think your emotions are going to be when, when you get up there at halftime and your name is called and you see the unveiling of your plaque along the ring of honor? How do you, what, what do you think you're going to be like? Uh, I'm scared. I'm trying not to do this. Oh. I wish my parents were alive. Yeah. My father never had a chance to do this. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he raised seven children on a very modest income. Mm -hmm. Two of his siblings, his oldest children, both graduated from college. Uh, my father had a 10th grade education. And my mother should have went to college, but that opportunity wasn't there because she had kids early on. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was inducted in the Hall of Fame in Louisiana, I got a chance to share that moment with them. I wish I had the opportunity to do the same next weekend or next Monday night. Uh, I wish that Wellington Mara was alive so that my dad could shake his hand. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for looking up to the boy. <laughs> that's, that's probably two things that she had a deal like telling me in that and I know what my emotion is going to be yeah. I know that it's one proud moment for my mm -hmm. family and, uh, and probably my biggest takeaway well you know what um, Leonard first off your dad and your mom and Wellington Mara they will be there with you. They'll be there in spirit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that state, everything giants, you know, Wellington Mara is part of that. Yeah. And your dad, I, I look, I, I know how you feel. Um, I mean, my father, as you know, he passed away a couple of years ago. Sure. And, you know, he, growing up, one of my, my fondest memories was watching giant football with him. Yeah, and I think I've told you this offline. I've, I've said he used to go to the screen and he would point out different players and he would say, yeah. pay attention to this one or this one. And he always, always used to point you out. And he used yeah. to say, this guy, Leonard Marshall, he's so underrated, but he's so good. He says, he says, you watch, he's going to be a Hall of Famer someday. He's, he's, he's important. He knew back then. Yeah. And, you know, he, I, I remember my dad, at, before he got sick, saying, Gosh, you know, I wish I could see, you know, this guy get into the Hall of Fame. You know, he was a big Eli Manning fan, you know, and, and he passed away. So I'm sure my dad, your parents, Wellington Mara, they're all going to be gathered around that big heavenly television set or whatever it is. They, they view life on earth and they are going to be beaming. It's going to be at night, but I, I'm telling you, if, if the night cloud wasn't there, you would see the sun coming down so bright because they will be proud of you, as oh, yeah. will be a lot of Giant fans who wow. had the privilege to see you play. A lot of today's Giant fans, you know, on social media, they missed the, the glory years, the 80s. You know, they weren't born until the 90s, the 2000s, you know. But um, having seen it growing up, I tell people all the time, there was nothing like that team. That, that 80s wow. team was phenomenal. The chemistry, you know, the, the just... The, the, the fact that you guys checked your egos at the door and what you were able to accomplish, that's something to be proud of. And I know you're going to have a lot of people, Leonard, who are proud of you, including oh, yeah. yours truly. And I'm so excited and so happy for the fans. I'm so excited and happy for my family. Um, I, 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 I can't say enough about the organization. Um, uh, I, I thank you, John Mara. 
Thank you, Stephen Tish, um, the entire Marin Tish family, uh, my football family, all my brothers that I worked so hard with, uh, both at LSU and the Giants, will all be there with me the night this happens. And if I get a chance, if I'm, a, I'll, I'll give you a hug for support before I see uh, you. If I happen to run into you before yes. things get started, because you, you know, I, I've been, I have been long in your corner, Leonard, and oh, no I am doubt. just thrilled, no thrilled beyond words that you're getting this honor, as well as you know the rest of the gentlemen who are getting the honor, well deserved. Um, and look, I don't say, you know, I don't say this as often as I, I should, but thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the wonderful Sundays that I enjoyed watching you play. I know you put your body on the line, you sacrificed your health, you made a lot of sacrifices, you yeah. know, not being with your family for holidays and whatnot. And you gave this, I started off as a giant fan. I still am a giant fan, even though I'm a media member, but you gave right. me a lot of wonderful memories. And I'm sure a lot of other giant fans, a lot of memories. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You're quite welcome, Pat. And thank you so much for all the support you've given. My pleasure, my friend. All right. That's going to do it for us today, Giant fans, Giant fans. So we will be back with you, as always. We'll be back with you tomorrow for our crossover show previewing the Dallas Giants matchup that takes second fiddle, I guess, to this Ring of Honor thing. So <laughs> until then, everybody, have a great day, and we will catch you soon. <laughs>